Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the oldest cheat of all time and for a very long time I felt like why would anyone still continue to use this cheat because it seems very obvious. It's the extra card cheat or the cards in lap cheat that has been made famous and recently it's come up with a guy from, uh, I forget what his name is, but he has the Amulet Bloom deck in Modern. And the Amulet Bloom deck has a 7 card combo where you can kill your opponent on turn 1 and they can't stop you. This dude was using that combo all the time. He would pull the combo from at turn 1, kill you all the time, and people would say he got lucky, right? But no one gets lucky all the time, right? Not all the time. He double sleeped his deck, he did all like that crazy stuff, he actually made a Twitter joke about how he was going to get the deck banned since he was so good at using it. And when I mean good at using it, I meant he stacked his deck by putting cards in apparently in his lap or his sleeve or he palmed it or there was some, he was presenting a 50 free car, uh, card deck to his opponent and he would keep 7 cards hidden away, I believe it was in his lap. And then when time came to draw the seven cards, he would like put his hand in his lap, take the cards, put it on top of the deck, and draw the same seven cards that he would need to win every single time. And that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. It's way less probable than drawing Exodia. Uh, the probability of you drawing those seven cards you need for 10 games or whatever matches he played in was insane. Now, this card in lap cheat is no, it's not new. It absolutely has been perfected throughout Magic's history. From the very beginning, you had, uh, this was the first time I heard of it. It always sounded kind of stupid to me that like, why wouldn't you catch the, the cards in a lap? But there's a lot of like distractions. Uh, maybe you're playing a new player. And the reason I want to make this apparent, and I'm going to dedicate uh, two videos to this issue, uh, the card and lap issue because I could totally see this happening in F and M. I had this one dude I play at my Friday Night Magic. Really, um, how should I say? How should I say this? Uh, very interesting dude, and he would drop cards all over the time. And one time I asked, you know, cards in hand, and there was way more than like. So it wasn't like one or two more. It was like he had four cards more in his hand than he was supposed to. And I was like. Uh, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I spilled the cards, but like, I, some weird scenario, I was like, uh, okay, whatever, because <laughs> I was going to beat him anyway. Uh, it's kind of very strange to me that still today at high level events, so back in that day, you had Mark Justice, Mike Long, you had a bunch of cheaters, and one of them, I forget what, who it was, but they had a Carnivorous Bloom and Drain Life type of deck. And prosperity, so you need those cards, and he would have all those cards, an extra card available in his like lap, and then like he would be like, oh, so I have one, piece one and two, but I need this extra piece. I'm not drawing it. Uh oh, my opponent's killing me. A jackal pup. All right, I mean, uh, oh, it's it's right here. I win. <laughs> that was how magic was back then, and that's how magic is today apparently, when people are stacking the perfect seven card hand. I'm not talking about a seven card hand that can kill you in a turn two. No, I'm talking about a seven card hand in modern that you cannot beat. There's no force of willing the you know combo piece away. There's no outs for you outside of pack of negation which you just lose the next turn. I'm talking about an undefeatable combo. So this was like at least with Carnivorous Bloom like by the time you get the combo together, somebody could counterspell it. There was ways to interact to prevent the pieces from going off, but not for this combo, not this early on. Uh, the combo is a turn one kill. A turn one kill all the time, uh, especially with those seven exact cards. And the dude kept beating down and kept beating down and keep, kept beating people with it. And no one noticed and no one cared and it was just ridiculous. And now finally it came out that the good dude was probably stacking his deck. Um, absolutely insane uh, that this would still have. I mean, back then when I was like much, much younger, I was like, oh, card and lap, this is the dumbest cheat ever. Well, no, it's one high level event. I'm sure it has. The issue here is if you're cheating 
at high level events with a lot of people, uh, a lot of cameras, a lot of cell phones around, you are cheating at your Friday Night Magic. You're cheating at your draft, you're cheating at your sealed, you're cheating all over the place because you're, I mean, it doesn't just appear out of nowhere that you decided to double sleeve your deck, that you have worked out the exact math so the pile shuffling works if your pile shuffling, your opponent's pile shuffles in seven, which is how I do it. Um, it's crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy. A lot of very disgusting, but makes me respect the pros who do not cheat. Because essentially, I don't... If you go, you play at Friday Night Magic, there's very little on the line. And people who are cheating at Friday Night Magic, they're just not, not good at Magic to begin with. Um, that's honestly the truth. But if you're cheating at like really high levels, and you're like a professional Magic player, and your income depends on winning, all the more respect for you not to cheat. I mean, that must be really hard to do when other people are cheating and you hear about the news, you hear about the disqualifications. I mean, has there been a pro tour where people have not been disqualified from? And we're talking about like the best professional Magic players. Uh, I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? That we still have, it's so mind boggling to me that the cheat of the 2015 is the same as from you know the Tempest era, era of just having extra cards in your lap, pulling out the cards that you need, putting on, and I don't know, it's, it's kind of sad, but at the same time, it just makes me respect the pros who don't cheat. And you might say, oh, how do you know they don't cheat? Maybe they're very good at not getting caught. The problem with cheating is once you cheat and you realize how easy it is not to get caught, you do it all the time. So this idea that I'm only going to cheat once, oh, I got, I, I got caught. I only no one who got caught is going to say that they cheated twice. They always say, oh, I just did it once. But then you look at it's double sleeve, the card count is you know, seven instead of you know, five or something. The combo pieces are different each time it's playing them. So it's not exactly the same seven cards, but Still, it's very, it's the seven cards you need to win on turn one. I don't know, it just seems very, very, uh, it seems like if you cheat once, you will continue to cheat. No matter what you're playing, even if you're kitchen table, you still probably, you still probably cheat at the kitchen table. I mean, what can you, what can I say? I mean, I, at some point, you have to like say, dude, you've done enough shady stuff. We want to ban you for life. That, had, that day has not come yet um, for a lot of these professional cheaters. And uh, hopefully it will. Hopefully it will.